Hi everyone and welcome back to our home. We are nearing the end of this home tour, but today I'm very excited to be showing you around our bedroom. It's probably not what you're expecting. It's not neutral. It's actually the same color as my dress. I do dress to match my interiors. So I'm gonna show you around, follow me. One of the first things you'll notice about our bedroom is that it's not taupe. I am absolutely in love with this colour. It's a design that I did with Fremantel and it's called Magnolia Canopy and it's inspired by the magnolia trees in our garden where you get all these beautiful old branches cascading down and then some of the petals are all embroidered by hand and the others are all hand painted. But the really bold decision here was to go for this burgundy background. When I was designing the collection and deciding which one to put in my bedroom, I was sort of umming and ahhing between this very bold design and then the more neutral branches in the breeze, which is a taupe background and probably more what people would expect from me. But I involved my husband in the decision because he's got great taste and he lives here too. And he absolutely loved this design. And I'm so glad that I went with his sort of gut feeling because it is a bold choice, but I absolutely love it. It's really cozy and somewhere really relaxing for us to spend time in the evening. One of the factors that really helped me make the bold decision to go dark on the walls was the fact that this room is flooded with natural light. It has three windows along the side and all that natural light comes pouring in and makes it not feel too dark and oppressive. But the other thing that I also did was combine this dark wall covering with white architraves, white cornice, white skirtings, and also some really large pieces of furniture in a light color. This sideboard is by Bernhardt and I got it from Lux Deco. And I chose it because it has this beautiful light finish, which is mother of pearl on the front. And I like how it's got the contrast of the dark top as well. And again, that really pops nicely against the darker wall covering. I've combined that with a really large mirror above. I find picking art that works with Shinrazi wallpaper is really tricky because it can compete with the wall covering, whereas a mirror is something that really complements it. And I like the mirror here because it reflects a beautiful view out of the windows across all the trees in the garden. On top of that, I've just put some photo frames with some happy memories of us and the kids and some beautiful accessories like these faux berries and a lovely glass vase and this lamp, which is one of my absolute favorites from Porta Romana, it's called the prism lamp. And I love how it's got the oversized shade. And if you look inside, you can see it's got this really warm colored silk that gives a really nice, lovely glow at nighttime. People often ask me about accessories and styling tips. So I just wanted to touch on a couple of the items on this sideboard. First of all, these magnolia twigs, which I literally chopped off the magnolia tree in my garden and they're about six years old, but they've dried perfectly and they work really nicely as it picks out the magnolia branches in the wallpaper. And then I've just put those in a tool vase. And then one of my favorite suppliers for photo frames, which are one of my favorite accessories, is Addison Ross. And this was one of my favorite designs. It's got a gorgeous picture of Oscar. And this really beautiful, rich colored wood, which I think works so well with the darker tones in here. This bed we've had for 10 years and I love the ornate shape of the headboard and how it works with the wallpaper. I actually designed all the arrangement of the branches to work around this shape. But again, being a very light color, it really stands out against the wallpaper and both of them look more beautiful for having a strong contrast. I also think when you're picking large pieces of upholstery, go for a plain neutral color because it doesn't really matter what scheme you put them with, they're always gonna go. Then to bring the colour back into the middle of the room, I've gone for this burgundy coloured silk velvet, and this is by Scalamandra, and had these custom cushions made. This is a emperor size bed, so it's absolutely massive. So each of these cushions I think is 65 by 65 centimetres, and then I've combined that with a brush fringe from Samuel and Sons that picks out that cream colour in the headboard, so it's bringing it all together. For the bedspread, I went for a custom made one. You can't find an imprecise bedspread off the shelf. And I also think a lot of the ready-made ones aren't that great. Something that I do want to bring out a collection of in the near future, so I'm gonna work on that. 
but this one is custom made and it's got two gorgeous fabrics from Johnson's of Elgin. Johnson's of Elgin's a mill in Scotland and it's, they make the most beautiful fabrics. So the top one is a wool fabric and then underneath for that extra touch of luxury we have a layer of cashmere which just feels so nice against your skin. If I get in here and sneak off to read a book in the middle of the day, this is the most luxurious thing to sort of snuggle up under. For the bedside tables, because the bed is so oversized, I actually didn't leave much space for bedside tables. So a little trick that I've come up with over the years is make your bedside tables much, much deeper. And that means that you can push your table lamp right to the very back and it leaves you a good sizable amount of surface area to dress with a photo frame or a box or a glass of water at night time. And then for these ones, they're quite simple. So I just dress them with a little tassel. This is a key tassel, you can buy these online that brings out that darker color in the wallpaper. The lamps on the bedside tables are from Porta Romana and I've gone for this lovely dark red that works so well with the wallpaper. And then for the shade, I've done two different fabrics. So on the outside, we have this really luxurious satin. And then on the inside, I wanted something that had a contrasting texture. So I've gone for quite a slubby linen. And it's just such a nice detail that when you're standing over the lamp, which I do on a daily basis, the texture catches your eye and it's just another little layer of luxury. On the bedside table, I've got a wedding photo of me and my husband. And I'm not scared of going high-low um, with items in my house. This one's from Zara Home, but I think it's a really beautiful frame and there's nothing wrong with a little bit of high street. For the curtains, in the same way with the headboard that I've gone for a very neutral colour, the curtains are this lovely ivory silk that's got a, a lot of texture in it. And again, I like to have a plain curtain because I feel like they're one of those items you don't ever want to replace and you want to make sure they'll work with whatever the rest of your fabric scheme is. Um, and I think they work really nicely because all, the, all your focus goes onto the wallpaper, not onto the curtains. And there's also quite a lot of them, so I feel like if there was a pattern or a strong colour, it might be a bit overbearing. How I've hung these curtains is I created a curtain pocket by bringing the cornice forward. The builder essentially ran some MDF with some brackets to create a support and then put the cornice on top of that MDF and that creates a curtain recess behind. And I think that's quite a neat way of hiding your curtain track. If you don't wanna go for a pelmet, which can be a little bit dated, a curtain pocket is a much neater way of doing that. At the same time as redecorating this room, around two years ago when I was pregnant with Oscar, we also redesigned all the lighting with John Cullen. And I remember one of the things they said to me that I should do, and I really sort of wasn't convinced, was to add these little spotlights in the window reveal. And I kind of thought it was just a waste of money because it was quite a lot of work involved in terms of drilling out the wall to put the wiring in. And I thought I never spend time in here until it's dark, at which point I close the windows, close the curtains. Um, but actually it's one of those things I'm so glad I did because it adds so much drama. And even though it's daytime, you can still see how it highlights the window reveal. And I don't even have particularly grand windows or much interest here, but it just creates this extra level of detail and it creates more depth in your room as well. So I'm really happy I listened to them. Everyone has a debate about whether or not you should have a TV in your bedroom and I have to say I am a massive convert. I used to tell all my clients they can't have a huge TV in their bedroom, that it was the wrong look and it wasn't setting the right mood. But now I have this 65 inch TV in here and my favourite thing to do is lie in bed and watch movies. But to make it a little bit more elegant, I knew I wanted to house it in some joinery. So we created this almost false chimney breast design, which I've wrapped in a silk wallpaper from Philip Jeffries. And again, that's in that light ivory color. So it's making some more lightness in the room. And then underneath, you'll see that I do this quite a lot in our clients' projects. We did this little niche, which is in a spray bronze finish. And then we've got some remote controlled candles and that creates such a lovely ambiance at night. You can turn them all on with one remote, so it's not like you have to turn each one on individually, but it gives a nice sort of glistening light, much in the same way that a fire does. To lighten up the piece of joinery, I knew I wanted to have these open shelves. It's a great opportunity to display some beautiful objects, um, some photo frames, and I went for this gorgeous sycamore wood veneer, and then these bronze bars, which I think just make it feel a little bit more contemporary and each of those has a spotlight in the shelf to highlight the objects um, and make a real design statement. 
I know styling tips are always welcome, so I'm gonna talk about a little bit of how I styled these shelves. Because they have these bars, it makes it a bit more tricky to style because you don't want too much hidden behind it, but you also need to have the objects placed centrally so that the light hits it equally. So on this shelf, I've done some leather books, which are one of my favorite home accessories. It's a great way to sort of elevate a smaller accessory. And on there, I've got this pair of bookends that are agate. And by just having one standing up and one lying down, it looks more sculptural. On this shelf here, you'll see that I've got a trio, a little grouping, and I always try and group my accessories so they feel a bit more um, cohesive. So here I've got um, some dried eucalyptus in a vase at the back, a little small desk and a candle, and again, that's on a leather book. And creating little groupings makes it feel less messy and more interesting and adds depth to your shelves. So behind me is actually an area that I'm currently designing. Originally, this whole area was open plan and this was a sitting room, but I think we sat in there about three times in nine years. So we decided over lockdown to turn it into a gym. And I'm gonna give you a teeny little sneak peek because it is not how I want it to be, but you'll have to watch future videos because I'm gonna redesign this space and I'm gonna document it all here so you can see everything that I do, why I make certain decisions and all of my sources. So have a quick look. Such a mess, that's all you get to see. <laughs> at the end of the bed, I've got this velvet sofa and I always like to have a piece of furniture at the end of the bed if there's room because it just looks a lot neater. It's also a great place to pile all your cushions when you get in bed at night and your bedspread. This one's custom made um, and it's probably a fabric that I wouldn't ever use again because you can see it's got all these little crush marks Velvets are very sort of tricky to use. You have to really do your research and make sure that you do your own testing to make sure that it's not gonna crush too badly. And if you're an interior designer and you're using them on your client's homes, you've really got to educate your client and make sure that they have that understanding that velvet is not something that you could just do whatever you want to it and it'll look great. It's something that you've got to be quite careful with or accepting of the fact that it's gonna have little marks. But even though this has little marks, I still love it. And when I used to have my Spaniel, if we left her for more than an hour in the house, we wouldn't leave her very often, um, but she was very demanding. She didn't like to be left at all. I used to take her to all my site visits when I went to projects in London. I only ate out at dog-friendly restaurants because I just wanted her with me the whole time. But on the odd occasion when I'd have to leave her at home, she always knew how to get her own back on me, which was she'd immediately dart up here jump on the sofa and scratch the hell out of the fabric. So un if I flip this over, you'll see these massive claw marks. And as soon as I came home, she'd have this look of utter guilt. And I'd know that my poor velvet sofa had once again been attacked. Rest in peace, velvet sofa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In front of the sofa, I've got this coffee table with a really sculptural form, and I wanted to go for something that was really ergonomic so that the space can flow around it. So I went for an oval shape, so there's no sharp corners. And then I've just dressed that with um, a char green tray, and then underneath this gorgeous tassel, which I'm gonna show you, I love a tassel. How lovely is that? And because I know that nothing gets past your eyes, I just want to briefly talk about the fact that I'm wearing shoes in my bedroom. I would never ever wear shoes that I've worn outside the house in the bedroom, but these ones are brand new and I've never worn them outside, so I feel like it's okay. But the last thing to mention in this room is the carpet. This one is called Mulberry and it's by Eaton Square. And I chose it because it has that lovely silky texture. I like the fact that you can kind of see the traffic throughout the room. Um, we put this one in about two years ago and I'd say it's wearing quite well but you just need to be mindful if you're living in an area that's got high traffic people are going to spill lots of things it's not bomb proof so I just want to be honest about that I really like it we've used it in a lot of projects and I think it looks beautiful um, so it's from Eaton Square if you're interested behind this door is my husband's dressing room and I'm going to show you around in a future video because I'm going to do a tour of both of our dressing rooms. Originally, when the house was being built, this was designed to be both his and her dressing room, but it certainly isn't big enough for my clothes, never mind sharing with him. So that is why I took over another bedroom to create my own dressing room away from him. And I think it's the key to a happy marriage is having separate dressing rooms, if you can, and separate bathrooms. 
His and hers. His and hers, or his and hers, hers and hers. <laughs> and then the last door of our bedroom leads into the principal bathroom. And again, I'm gonna save that for another video because it's a really, really big space. I'll give you a little sneak peek. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more behind the scenes, more tips and tricks, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.